All right, so let's take a look at examples of symmetries of graphs. So we're in section 1.1, and I'm on page 63 of the textbook. We did 42 in the last video, so let's take a look at, or 42 in the last video, so let's look at 44. We'd like to test the symmetry of this graph. So there's three types of symmetry we need to check for. We need to check for x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, and origin symmetry. Starting with x-axis symmetry, to test for x-axis symmetry, all we do is we replace the other variable, y, with minus y, and see if we get the same thing back. So the only time y occurs is on the left-hand side. So rather than just y on the left, it's going to be minus y. Everything else will remain the same. So the question becomes, is this the same thing as the original equation? If so, we do have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If it isn't the same equation, then we don't have symmetry. Well, this negative is enough to throw everything off. So this is not symmetric with respect to the x-axis. And WRT is just notation for with respect to. So that's x-axis symmetry. There is none in this case. For y-axis symmetry, we're going to replace x with minus x. So, in the equation, x has only occurred on the right-hand side. On the left, we just had y. So, instead of x cubed, it's going to be minus x cubed. And remember to put these things in parentheses, because it could be the case that, you know, minus x cubed is different than a minus outside than x cubed. Yeah. Could be that these two things are different. They're not in this case because it's an odd power. So let's see. Minus x cubed. That's minus x times minus x times minus x. That's a minus times a minus times a minus. Three negatives multiply to a negative and three x's multiplied together make x cubed. Minus a minus x becomes plus x, and this is not the same thing as the original, because the original was x cubed minus x. So this does not have any y-axis symmetry. not symmetric with respect to, or WRT, the y-axis. And the last symmetry we want to check is origin symmetry. This is the 180 degree rotation symmetry. Nope. Let's go back. Now that I'm thinking about labeling kind of my subsections here, I'm also indicating as I go along whether or not they're symmetric, so that when I go back and check my answer, or summarize my answer, it's very easy to do so. With origin symmetry, we're replacing both x with minus x and replacing y with minus y. So let's do that. We have, instead of y, it's now minus y instead of x, it is, instead of x cubed, it's minus x cubed, 
minus a minus x minus y again same reduction on the right hand side as we had in the last instance minus x cubed is just minus x cubed minus a minus becomes plus x and you may look at this and think well hey that's not the same thing well it doesn't look like it initially but what if we were to multiply the left and right hand sides by minus one minus a minus y becomes a plus y or just simply y minus x cubed times minus one is just plus x cubed or x cubed plus x times minus one is minus x and that is the same thing so sometimes you have to do a little bit of simplification in order to get the original equation back and it's not always obvious when you have to do so and uh, when you can't but one good way to check is that if you notice in these past in the other two cases here the right hand sides of the new equation and the original equation are exactly the same well if that's the case if the right hand sides are the same then the left hand sides have to be exactly the same as well and they aren't so these two equations aren't the same the same reasoning applies here only with the left hand side here the left hand side of our new equation is the same as the left hand side of our original equation they're both y but the right hand side of the original is not the same thing as the right hand side of our new equation so since the left hand sides are equal the right hand sides are not we don't have symmetry here, if we were to stop here, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of our new equation is different. Both the left and the right-hand sides are different. So try to simplify it. Try to get y, the easiest thing to do here is try to get y by itself. So if we multiply by a negative 1, we're going to get y by itself. And sure enough, when we get y by itself, we get the original equation back. So in this case, our equation, y equals x cubed minus x, is only symmetric with respect to the origin. And again, with respect to is abbreviated as WRT. Meaning, this graph, because origin symmetry is just 180 degree rotation. And if you looked at this graph, to give you kind of a rough sketch, roughly this is what this graph looks like. And if you turn this upside down, ignoring the crappy drawing this should look basically it should look exactly the same but the crappy drawing you have to use your imagination but yeah this does have a similar shape if we rotate the page 180 degrees and that's what we call origin symmetry all right let's do some more forty six on 46, we're looking at y equals minus 3x to the 6th plus 2x to the 4th plus x squared. Now, we can really start off with any of these, x-axis, y-axis for origin, but just to have a consistent pattern, I'll keep starting off with x-axis symmetry. So we're replacing y with minus y. 
And in this case, that's going to change the left-hand side, but it's not going to change the right-hand side of the equation. So the right-hand side of our new equation is the same as the right-hand side of our original, but the left-hand sides are different. So this is not symmetric with respect to the x-axis. If we try y-axis symmetry, we're going to replace x with minus x. So this is going to be the trickier one because you have to have use your parentheses here. Probably should have done that here as well. When I'm replacing y's, put parentheses around them. Same thing as when you're replacing x's. Because then, you know, this is not going to be the same thing as a minus x to the sixth. Minus x, all of that raised to the sixth, is going to end up being just x to the sixth. It's an even power. So we're going to have an even number of negatives multiplied together, which ends up being a positive. So, for the exact same reasons I just said, I'm going to have six x's multiplied together and six negatives multiplied together. Multiplying six negatives just leaves me with a positive x to the sixth. But instead of writing a plus here, we just write, you know, plus x to the sixth, it's just x to the sixth. Well, the same thing holds for these two. 2x to the fourth, because multiplying out, there will be four negatives in this multiplication. Four negatives multiply to be a positive. I'll also have four x's multiplied together, which give me x to the fourth. And same thing here. The negative goes away because there is an even number of negatives multiplied together. So here, the left-hand side is the same. We didn't do anything to change the left-hand side, so if the right-hand side is the same, which it actually is, this is minus 3 times x squared. It's a different way of writing it, but it means the same thing. So the left is, is the same, the right is the same. This is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And for origin symmetry, we replace x with minus x and y with minus y. So, <clears throat> if we do that, minus or y becomes minus y. Minus 3x to the sixth becomes minus 3 times minus x raised to the sixth and then it's plus 2 times not x but minus x raised to the fourth plus minus x squared. Well, for the exact same reason, you know, the right hand side is the same as it was in the last case for y-axis symmetry. So it'll simplify in the exact same way which means the right-hand side turns out to be exactly the same as the original equation. But the left-hand side isn't the same. In the original, the left-hand side is just y, whereas here it's a minus y. So this is not the same thing as the original, which means this graph will not have origin symmetry. So if we summarize these, the only symmetry that we have here is y-axis symmetry. So this function, or graph, as we're calling it now, We'll come to the word function a little later on in this chapter. 
this graph only has y-axis symmetry or is only symmetric about the y-axis. Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and do one more. I know this is running long. Two x squared minus absolute value x. All right. So for x-axis symmetry, we replace y with minus y. So that's going to be minus y is 2x squared minus absolute x. We didn't change the right hand side. The left hand side changed and it's not the same thing as the original. So there's no x-axis symmetry for this. For y-axis symmetry we are supposed to replace x with minus x and in doing so we get y equals 2 times minus x squared minus the absolute value of minus x. Well, just like we saw in the previous problem, minus x squared is x squared. That same reasoning holds here. And if you remember our talk about absolute values, absolute values throw away negatives. So regardless of whether x is positive or negative, this, the absolute value of minus x, is the same thing as the absolute value of x. So the left-hand side was unchanged. The right-hand side changed initially, but we were able to simplify it back to the original. So this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And the only other symmetry is origin symmetry in which we replace x with minus x and y with minus y. If you're clever, you'll realize that if a graph has any two of these symmetries, if there's a check by any two of these, then the third one has to be a check as well. Meaning, this can't have origin symmetry. So for the same reason, Replacing x with minus x doesn't change the right-hand side, but replacing y with minus y does change the left-hand side. So since the left-hand side changed and the right-hand side didn't, this is not the same thing as the original equation. And so that tells us this does not have origin symmetry or the 180-degree symmetry. This graph only has y-axis symmetry. Thanks for sticking with me this long.